Thank you, Nicola. Um, Hugh can't be here. We decided that there's so much going on back at the ranch that um, he decided he would stay there and I'd come out into the lion's den and just give an update. A lot of these uh, points you'll have heard before and slides you'll have seen before, but there is real progress. Um, the first thing to say is that uh, the operator application has been submitted to the FCA. Um, and what, what is unusual is, is before, and I've been involved with pushing things through the FCA or FSA as then was, uh, you have to get everything ready, push it through, and then that's it. But they have been told to be nice to us. They are being quite helpful. Though it's a learning curve for all of us, so I'll come back to that in a second. The chairman of the board of directors has been appointed. Uh, Lord Kerslake, who is the head of the civil service, is the chairman. Chris Billsland, who is well known to all of you, who is here today, is also another non-executive director. And the, and the third one who's been appointed is Lisa Arnold, who brings with her wealth of experience as a NED in the investment field. Um, and there's one more NED to be appointed. So the first board meeting was on Tuesday, uh, and uh, the next fund application is in the next few weeks, uh, so these things are uh, uh, progressing sequentially. And then the same bullet point that Hughes always had is that the first assets are under management in the autumn, but he assures me as a civil servant that uh, autumn stretches up to the 24th of December. Uh, that's, the reason for this is, is that uh, firstly, of course, um, and something I'll come back to, this is far more complex than I thought anyone really realised that the undertaking of the project, which is why the timetables have slipped. Uh, the second one is a lot of it's outside, is out of our hands, whether it's the regulatory authorities, the lawyers, uh, the custodians and so on and so forth. And the last point is that Hugh has the idea, and I think a very good one, that if you have very tight deadlines, you might slip a bit, but that gets things a lot more done a lot more quickly than having uh, very loose deadlines which people just blow through. Um, so we are cracking on. In terms of the governance, uh, still not there. In terms of the governance slide, at the top level, are participating local authorities. Within London, we've got uh, pretty much 31 out of the 33 are signed up, and that I think is fantastic effort by the team. Um, heading it on a sort of uh, oversight. Uh, mission is that the uh, sectoral joint committee which is made up of the section 101 officers um, and then allied to that is the investment advisory committee and this is taken from five section 151 officers and eight pension fund officers around the boroughs and I think it, it, it emphasizes that it's very much a collaborative effort it's not going to be us sitting in the CIV dictating anything um, but it shows that there will be as well as a, a vertical very much a flat structure for the sharing of ideas um, beneath that of course we have the operator which is the London CIV and then the sub funds which will cover all the assets in terms of the investment fund managers, um, they know who they are, of course, and all I'll say at this stage is we'll be launching with a combination of passive and active global equity fund managers. In terms of the benefits, in a high-level view, there's a range of readily available investment opportunities, which uh, will be of great benefit and uh, lower friction costs. The reassurance of regulatory overlay, and by that I mean we do have to, as a fully regulated and authorised um, entity, we have to do endless independent due diligence, so that just because a fund has been used by existing boroughs doesn't mean to say that we can grandfather that in on due diligence grants. Um, so a lot of my role will be the monitoring, uh, risk and uh, endless reporting. So what we're doing is spending a lot of time building very robust systems using third-party suppliers um, so that the regulatory overlay should give people a lot of reassurance. Of course, it's not a merger, but joint investment. And in terms of significant cost savings, which I'll come on to, it's not just fees. We're seeing more and more opportunities for hard cash savings in, in areas like custody. And tax, it is tax efficient, and again, it's more complicated than anyone thought, you know, the, the, how ACS has fit into various uh, existing tax regulations has, has meant quite a lot of thought and work has got to be done on that, and that's something I'm undertaking at the moment. In terms of the attributes and non-cash benefits, I just want to reiterate what Jeff Houston said, that the strategic decision-making stays at the local level. And what we are finding, and there was discussion about this on Monday, is that the end of the silo mentality, in other words, the governance dividend, 
is not just really a nebulous concept, but already through shared experience, breaking down the barriers um, and talking to each other, that's already generating a lot of cross-sharing of ideas. And I think that the way the system's been set up, it, it's just unfortunate that we're all so busy, as well as signing NDAs and various other things, is that we tend to think very much in a silo mentality. Um, going back to the asset allocation, of course the changes can be more rapid if we've done all the groundwork and put the fund managers that we recommend uh, with, with the collaboration of other boroughs onto the CIV, uh, then it's much easier for people to make the changes. And the point about that is it frees up officers' resources, and this is a crucial point, without removing the control so that pension fund officers can focus on whether it's the... Uh, um, oh, here we go, excellent. So whether they can focus on the um, pensions administration uh, or, the, uh, or, or meeting the, the uh, liabilities, because at the moment, otherwise, you get a system whereby everyone is doing the same kind of processes across London, and this will free up considerable resource. It's not catching up. In terms of the, um, just to reiterate, in terms of the lower costs and better opportunities, uh, there are of course lower fund management fees, and quite a few people want to know what the quantum of that is. Now, I don't, we, it's difficult to be held to any one figure at the moment. We are seeing up to about 30% savings all in, and that's not just confined to one uh, asset class, which is uh, encouraging. Um, there is the shared cost of procurement and due diligence, the lower friction cost, but really I want to emphasize that all those opportunities and savings I've talked about before is phase one. So when, once we've rolled out, phase one is proof of concept and we can see that there will be savings out of the gate. Phase two is that we get greater financial firepower which opens up new opportunities in other infra in classes such as infrastructure and alternatives. Um, I've done quite a lot of work talking to various infrastructure players and it's pretty immediately apparent that once you move out of the individual funds uh, a whole new uh, landscape opens up in terms of both opportunities um, and of course uh, the economics going into co-invest and other collaborative ideas. Um, there has been some talk about whether or not we need in-house expertise on that. We're keeping very much an open mind, uh, looking at various things. But of course, remember that we will be a fully regulated and authorised fund management company, and therefore in-house investment expertise for various specific asset classes is very much something we'll be focusing on. Um, but it, we will, of course, be looking very much at infrastructure um, in the months to come, because this is where uh, the greatest opportunities lie. And uh, the proof of concept as we roll out, and there's a lot to do before we get going, it is just to reiterate, it is just the beginning. So we need to start somewhere, the passive and global equities. And following on from that, once we've had the commonality, we're going to roll out into uh, further equity. Bonds is interesting because there's uh, surprisingly little commonality within London on the fixed income mandates. And I think perhaps that respects quite a lot, it reflects quite a lot of the turmoil going on in the fixed income income markets and through property of course and just to reiterate again we won't be there it is likely that people want to hang on to their existing property and other assets uh, as they roll off um, with collaboration with other funds and pools I want to say a couple of things first of all uh, it is the London CIV but we are talking to people from outside London um, so if anyone is interested we, are, we, we do believe this is a very scalable uh, uh, platform and the, the more that we get together in the beginning the better the ideas will be and that the CIV is there to take ideas from other people and secondly of course talking to colleagues in the private sector uh, the, I think the membrane between the public sector and the private sector is going to be increasingly porous going forwards and I find it interesting that the kind of challenges that the private sector colleagues are, are finding um, is actually quite similar to the, to the kind of issues that we are discovering. Uh, so we'll be happy to talk to uh, pools of capital from around the system and also in the private sector. In terms of the experience of, uh, the experience of setting it up, I would say that uh, don't expect it to be easy. I think it's a massive learning curve for us all. I think that where the London CIV is going, it's freeing up 
is that through being pathfinders, uh, we are going through a lot of the pain and hopefully saving a lot of pain for other people going into CIVs. It is increasingly technical, and I think what well, what we're finding is that normally when you set up a fund management company, the third party suppliers uh, tend to have a, a boilerplate approach. And it's not to criticize them, it's just they've seen it all before, so they can tailor that approach to what you're doing. Uh, with us, though, we're having to go back and help them to write the documents from the very beginning. And again, that's an experience to, to an extent the FCA, because they're having to go back and have a look at a fresh look at even the basics. Um, so we are sort of building it from the ground up. However, it is very time consuming, and uh, setting up a CIV, certainly there's been a lot of full time resource on the project for a long time, as well as at the TSG and other committees that have been helping from around the boroughs. Uh, so you do need to give us a lot of thought about dedicating enough resource, perhaps full time. Another point is that the uh, passive, a lot of people thought that this would be a very easy uh, experience, and that's the low-hanging fruit. We found it actually to be incredibly difficult technically. Of course, just because you might have the same manager, you might think you have the same mandate, but there are a lot of, uh, an awful lot of technical considerations to consider, and that's what's uh, occupying our time at the moment. You've got to understand that collaboration makes some comp also means a lot of compromises that takes a lot longer than you think. You know, the CIV is now going full bore in terms of preparation for launch, but really it's been, preparation has been for more than two years. And in terms of costs, uh, there's legal and other advisory. You do need to give some consideration because these, uh, these costs are material. But overall then, I just want to emphasize that we are still on track to launch some funds before Christmas. Uh, it's incredibly technical at this stage, seeing how all the streams of work flow together from tax to regulation, uh, to custodian, to reporting, and so on and so forth. We're working very closely with the fund managers. Uh, we'd like to see the fund managers are partners of the CIV, uh, rather than people we just shoot from the hip and hire and fire uh, willy-nilly. And uh, the CIV is set up, it's not just for um, passive, but to reiterate, it's a full service fund management company. Uh, I think Hugh said the other day he didn't spend two and a half years of his life doing this as just a joint procurement exercise. And so really the effort's gone in to make sure that the foundations are deep and can support uh, a weighty superstructure on top. Um, we are driven by the boroughs who are effectively our clients. Uh, we are open for business from outside London. Um, and hopefully uh, the next time we stand up in front of you we'll have something to talk about in terms of funds under management. Thank you.